What's up everybody, Couch Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Valorant video, and in this video, we have to break down the controversial return of Sinatra. Sinatra announced that he's probably returning to Valorant Esports, so we need to talk about that, talk about what people are saying about it, the opinions on the internet, and the war that's going on on Twitter right now. There's really just a lot to break down right now so that you're informed about what's going on. But if you want to support the channel, the Game Leap website is the best place to pop off and dominate. We do in-depth breakdowns, tips, tricks, guides, and everything you need in order to climb. So do yourself a favor and go check it out right now down below. Now, before we actually talk about this controversial situation, I wanted to slip in some just really crazy esports news. Hiko has announced his full retirement from pro play. He's now going to be a full-time content creator. The clutch god himself, Hiko, is no longer going to be a pro, and that's just crazy to me. I don't always think that being an esports player always works that well with growing up and maybe trying to start a family. Not saying that Hiko is trying to do any of that stuff. I'm just saying that when you're already successful and you've pretty much done everything you needed to accomplish in the pro scene, moving on to content creation that has a much better work-life balance is probably just a really good idea. I mean, but now we move on to the controversial story of Sinatra. If you don't remember, which you probably do, Sinatra was banned from competitive Valorant for a six month period. Quite a while back, it's been about a year at this point. And when that happened a long time ago, we covered the story, we covered the controversy, and I'm not gonna revisit all of that specifically, but I am gonna talk about all the new developments that have happened because Twitter's going crazy and the Valorant community and even other gaming communities are extremely angry and conflicted about the new information. So let's first talk about the tweet that started it off from Sinatra himself. He said this, quote, it's been a year since I was forced to step back from competitive play. In that time, I have learned a lot about myself and grown as a person. I am now ready for a return to competitive play and will be starting tryouts this week. Now, this was met by a lot of positive sentiment to start off with. There was a lot of pros responding and content creators responding, saying that this was awesome. And we also got more news that after not being put in any Sentinel videos for the past year, now Sentinels have decided to start putting Sinatra back in their content creation videos, the little clips, the YouTube videos, and it looks like Sinatra is going to be a part of the brand for the future, at least as is now. Now, I don't necessarily think that that's really that surprising. I mean, he is still a content creator for Sentinels, and as an org, to invest in Sinatra and not drop him based on everything that happened, at some point, they want to utilize his name and his fame to, you know, grow their brand, grow their org, and if they were never going to include him in any content in the future, they probably would have fired him a long time ago. Now when asked, welcome back, any info on what teams you are looking to join? Sinatra responded saying his first choice would be returning to Sentinels, which is interesting because I have no idea how that would even work or happen considering Sentinels has a full roster right now. And even though Sentinels has been struggling and multiple people in the past have said they needed changes, I don't really think that just slotting in someone who hasn't played on the team for a year, no matter how good Sinatra is or whatever the case may be, I don't think that you're going to suddenly return to full form and just be able to pop off. Just because they popped off before when Sinatra was on the roster doesn't necessarily mean that they would pop off now. The scene is completely different, and I think that a lot of people kind of mythalize Sinatra ever since his ban. He's grown a lot and become a lot bigger in some areas of the Valorant community. And uh, yeah, he's not going to just drop on a team and make that team win if they have fundamental problems, whether it's the coaching, whether it's the synergy or whatever. Now, I want to make it clear that many people were not happy with anything that was announced and anything that is happening. And there have been a lot of people reporting the situation and people having controversial or hot take opinions about it. So let's read some of those. First off, we have Jake Lucky saying, when Riot Games issued Sinatra a six month suspension for failure to comply with the investigation for the sexual assault allegations, it was quite literally only a matter of time for him to return to competing. It is now up to esports teams to make their own choice on the matter. But just a reminder, the investigation was dropped due to the mental health of the accuser it remains unresolved. And a story like this will forever create a rift in the gaming space with people on both sides. Was he found guilty? No. Were there surrounding details both in his behavior and with the investigation and the evidence against him that were certainly concerning? Yes. 
Now moving on to some harder takes, we have Valorant Insider Max Katz saying this, quote, Sinatra says he was forced to step back from competitive play, when in reality he was suspended for not fully cooperating with Ryan's investigation, yet people still believe he did nothing wrong, appalling how he is being welcomed back in the scene like nothing ever happened. Now I do think that there are a lot of arguments against Sinatra coming back and against Sinatra entirely. I see this particular argument a lot and I don't really think it's that great of a one. Specifically because Sinatra didn't cooperate with the Riot investigation, he is basically then guilty. Now I'm not saying he's not guilty and I'm not saying he is guilty. What I am saying is the fact that he didn't cooperate is being used as evidence. Regardless of what he said he would do, oftentimes, whether you're being accused of anything, even if it's a crime like shoplifting or whatever the case may be, pleading the fifth, getting your lawyer involved, and not talking to either someone, an entity like Riot, or even the law enforcement is the best way to get a favorable verdict for you. And this actually is true regardless of whether you're innocent or guilty. Because if you're guilty, then yeah, of course, you're probably it's in your best interest to not cooperate, which is kind of what is being implied here, that he's guilty and he's not cooperating. But even if you're innocent, not cooperating is something that should be preached a lot in general with a lot of investigations, whether legal or corporate side, because you could easily be convicted for things or get in trouble for things that you did not do. It has happened many times in history. And I do think that a lot of people making these arguments actually agree with that stance. So I don't know why it's being used against Sinatra for this specific case. I do think it's a little bit of hypocrisy. But like I said, this is only one of the many arguments against Sinatra, but this is the one that I see a lot, so I wanted to talk about it. Now, in my opinion, a stronger take coming from esports journalist for Doe Esports as well, Liz Richardson said, quote, I don't want to hear a single word about cancel culture in esports ever again after seeing the way that the Valent community has welcomed back Sinatra with open arms. It's disheartening, it's infuriating, it's disgusting. And I want to be honest, even if you're an avid Sinatra fan, it's incredibly hard to argue against what she's saying here. Specifically, cancel culture is something that has been yelled a lot in the open space, on Twitter, and just about a lot of the controversies that have come out recently. But if Sinatra returns to pro play in full form, you can't say that he's ever canceled. In fact, that doesn't even come close to apply to what has happened to Sinatra. He has blown up in the Valent community so much bigger than he ever was before. He was already really popular, but his stream has grown up to crazy numbers, and him returning means that not only has he grown immensely from this entire ordeal, he actually will just, you know, get everything back that he had before. Now, you are quote unquote canceled in the fact that your name is kind of dragged through the mud. So that might be true there, but as far as tangible things that he has and access to things, there's no way you could justify Sinatra is canceled. Now, there could be an argument that Sinatra only got popular to this extent as a repulsion or kind of an anti-form of cancel culture protest. I don't really think you could make that argument either. In some ways, that might be what people think they're doing when they're really heavily supporting Sinatra in the first place, but that is definitely not the way that it's happened in the past with a number of different controversies with many different creators, whether it's popular people like Logan Paul, David Dobrik, people like PewDiePie, people like Speed. There are a million examples of cancel culture not really being a thing for the most part, unless you do something universally reprehensible by basically every side of the aisle, every side of the Twitter sphere, every side of the community, then you typically end up back and stronger than ever or bigger than ever at the end of any controversy. So I do agree with Liz's take here about you know, cancel culture is not really a thing right now. Now, I do want to make it clear here. I'm not telling you how to feel about this situation. I'm just trying to relay the information in the news from multiple sides so you get a clear picture about what's going on with Sinatra. Now, the ultimate takeaway is actually something that many people that are against Sinatra are not going to like very much, but it's actually the truth. And it was a tweet from Thorin, and he said this, quote, If you thought no team would gamble on Sinatra, you are very naive about the industry you're following. The guy was way too good of a player for every notable org to pass up on the potential competitive advantage at the cost of tanking some backlash. 
So basically, Thorne's argument here is that Sinatra is just too good so that an org would just pick him up because that's how good of a player he is. And they want him on the roster regardless of whether or not they're going to get roasted to death on Twitter. It doesn't matter because it gives them a chance to succeed when otherwise they wouldn't. And while I do somewhat agree with that argument, I want to pass on an even stronger argument where look at what has happened with Sinatra. Regardless of how you feel about the entire situation and Sinatra himself, look at what has happened to him as a streamer, as an individual ever since his ban, right? He's grown tremendously and he's had a lot of backlash and he's had a lot of hate directed towards him. And that hasn't stopped him from growing because of maybe some of that quote unquote you know, fake cancel culture, you know, repellent or the people that are standing against it or whatever the case may be. Regardless, Sinatra has grown a lot and a small org would easily be able to justify and look at that growth and say, even if we got the same hate put under the same pressure cooker that Sinatra was, we can utilize his same growth, the growth he's already accused and even more of the same growth because we are backing someone who's controversial to grow ourselves. And a smaller org has very little to lose. You gotta understand that the majority of esports orgs, in fact, all of them are unprofitable, VC funded, and the majority of them are gonna crash and burn anyways. So taking a gamble on someone like Sinatra is most likely gonna happen. It really is up to Sinatra whether or not he's going to accept you know, falling down to a lesser org. I highly doubt some of the top orgs would take up Sinatra with the exception of Sentinels themselves because they've already stood by him like we talked about at the beginning of the video. But regardless, this is going to be a controversial figure that is going to be basically in the Valorant scene. And I don't really think that any amount of controversy is gonna stop that. It's gonna be hard to hear for those of you who don't like Sinatra, but I do think it's the truth. I think unless Riot goes out and rebans Sinatra or Sinatra changes his mind and just says, I don't really want to be a pro player. Those are the only two things that can stop this from happening. But I ultimately want to pass the question on to y'all. I know that a lot of you admire Sinatra and I know a lot of you really, really hate him. So I do want to hear your opinion down below. Try to keep it, you know, a little bit civil in the comments. And uh, if you really feel strongly about one way or another, it's in your best interest to actually convince the other side of your argument rather than just screaming at them, okay? But if you want to support the channel, the Gambling website is the best place to do so. We have a lot of in-depth guides and breakdowns on pro players and top level players in the industry. So if you really want to dominate and climb, do yourself a favor and go check it out right now down below.